shall do the jump. So today, chums, you can probably tell behind me, I've got the trailer to Light No Fire. The new IP and announcement from Hello Games. And the last time I reacted to this trailer, I was overly excited. Yes, I did do quite a lot of observations, but I think my excitement got the better of me. I want to do another deep dive. I want to go over some of this. And I'm looking more into questions that I have that I hope get answered in the next trailer. Anyway, let's jump on over onto game. Let's go and hit on the, on the play. So here we go. Kaboom! Okay, so the trailer starts off with these characters standing here, looking over this sort of black you know, precipice. Now, you can see here, this bow, that bow, and that bow are all pretty much the same. And also, they've got the same yellow capes. Now, inside of No Man's Sky, we all start with the Raza ship. I'm wondering whether this is the starting get-up. So if you choose to be a bowman, that's kind of the ensemble you're going to be rocking about with. That is, if you even just choose a class. You know, that's one of the questions that I've got right off the bat, is what classes are there to choose from, and what races are there to choose from? Because this guy is clearly a rabbit man. Well, this guy's got, like, fawn-type horns. Yeah, so, yeah, a couple of races right off the bat. Right, now, next off, I should hit play again, is... What I'm noticing is the distance drawn on this is phenomenal. The volumetric clouds, the water shaders, the amount of variation that we're seeing. It's, there's freaking tons of it, people. So what is this running on? Is this running on some sort of development rig? Is this running on a high-end PC? Is it PS5? It doesn't actually say at any point during this trailer what the specifications are. Now, I'm liking the variation in grass, the variation in trees. I'm wondering whether they're using some sort of mesh distortion technique on these. I don't know whether these are pre-constructed assets or whether they are all morphs of certain wireframes because there just seems to be a lot of organic sort of feel to this. It feels very organic indeed. Now, look at these things here. And what is this exactly? I mean, you've got all these lines all over the place. It almost looks like some sort of laboratory type maze. But these almost look like concentric rings, almost like it's pointing out some kind of, I don't know, astrological event, you know, maybe, I don't know. But we see that again mirrored on a doorway later on when we get to this chamber full of rabbits, which I get to in a bit. Now again, this guy's another race, he's got some sort of antlers going on, it's not the same horns as the previous guy, and the mount looks pretty darn freaking fantastic. So another question I have is at what point do you actually get to ride mounts? Can you do it right from the off? How do you go about taming these creatures? Also, if you are to come into this game, how are you going to find other players to actually join with? You know, inside of like No Man's Sky, we've got the Nexus, which is like this player driven hub. Is there anything like this inside of this game? Because it's not obvious if there is. And how do you actually convene on other players' locations? It's not like we're seeing any sort of you know, X, Y coordinates or portal codes like we used to in No Man's Sky. So I'd love to know how this becomes a multiplayer Earth and how you hook up with other players in multiplayer. And is it available right off the off? What's the tutorial like? <laughs> yeah, I got so many questions. Anyway, let's hit play. Sweet. I love the way the twil tail swishes around. Pretty nice. I like all these little particles as well floating about. Okay, now we're at a fantasy earth and we've got these little skeleton guys running around. Now at first I thought this might be a player model and I thought these might be like little companions but I'm fairly sure you see another one of these little skeletons run in from the left hand side and he runs down here in a bit. Just keep your eye peepers open for that. I quite like this old relic sort of site that's going on here. And again, on one of these columns over here, you can see all that sort of labyrinthy, mazy type inscription y bits over at the back there. Very curious, very curious indeed. And I'm wondering where, what the lore is going to be like and the depth of the law, and what the actual game actual objective is. What is the end goal of this? Why are we on this procedural earth? What is the end event? Is there a boss? Is there an antagonist? We don't see any of that inside of this trailer. Get there, look, there he is down there, look, you see him? Little tiny guy over there. I'm fairly sure he's another one of these little cat skeleton type goblin dudes. Okay, right. Now this is quite lovely. Again, you've got the antler types here. You've got another horny type, fawny type guy there. This guy almost looks like he's a bear, like some kind of polar bear perhaps. And he's obviously got some sort of magical blade. 
maybe enchanted, I don't know, but it's lighting up blue, and it's even lighting up enough to light up his arms in the same sort of blue hue. Pretty darn cool, is it an ice blade? Is it a lightning blade? Is it a magical blade at all? Or does it glow when goblins are near? Who frickin' knows, people? Again, questions, lots of questions. One being, how many different types of swords are there? Or do you just get a couple of types of sword and you imbue them with magical skills? And what is the magical level in this game? You know, can you actually conjure stuff out or is it just enchantments? Don't know. And I'm not too sure what race this little guy is down here. You can't see much of him. This object in the background here. Now, Professor Cynical done a video and he said that it looks just like the Nexus. Yeah, it does a little. Maybe underneath these big sort of round domes is some sort of entrance that you can go in. Maybe they're the player hubs. Maybe they're hub zones. Who freaking knows? But they're bloody huge. So yeah, you can see them from a mile off. It would make sense to have something that large as some sort of player hub zone. And maybe have them in each biome is what I would say. Well, who knows? Anyway, let's hit play. I'll tell you what, all these trees though, they're blinking beautiful, aren't they? It does make me wonder whether there might be some sort of seasonal environmental changes going on here, or whether they are just different biomes. Is there a day and night cycle? It's not like I see the sun in the sky or a moon appear or anything like that. Okay, right, anyway, we've moved on to the underwater scene. There's a big sunken galleon here. Looks pretty darn freaking epic. I'm hoping we can go inside of there and look for some kind of treasures. It'd be cool if you can find a new armor piece or a new weapon or something. There needs to be reasons to explore and I'm hoping that's in here. I mean, it did say that there's rare resources to be had. All footage, in-game multiplayer. What platform? What platform? It's all right saying it's all multiplayer in-game. I can only assume that it's PC, since the only place that we can see this right now is on Steam, but even on their website it doesn't mention what platforms this is going to be available from on the off. Yeah. Anyway, we've got a new race here, a little otter guy, and we've got what appears to be a humanoid, you can just see the rear end of them here, but that looks like a female character. You know, got a big ponytail and stuff. I know men can have ponytails. Sorry to assume your gender, but it does look female. And we've got another one swimming down here. Again, looks quite humanoid, as opposed to this one. Anyway, let's hit up play. Oh, something else to note is down here you've got like a little wand. So this is your weapon. And over here we've got what looks like a little fish in this sort of like a HUD thing down here. And then what looks like a temperature gauge down the side and whether it's night and day. So I, I imagine, well, I mean, it's got the sun in it anyway. So I'd imagine we have got a night and day cycle. Anyway, let's hit play. Oh, and up in this top corner, it could be how much sort of stamina you've got or how much health you've got. It's not the biggest indicator in the world, though, is it? You know, is this the HUD? And what view is this in? You know, are we going to be able to play in third person view or can we play in first person view? We know No Man's Sky. Okay. Oh, hold on one second. That little guy swimming over in the background almost looked amphibious. This guy. Yeah, look, he's got some sort of amphibious head. Almost looks lizard-like or like a newt or something. Aha! Okay, so we've got quite a fair few races going on. Actually, you probably can't see that. I'm probably in the way. Let me just take the camera set off for a second. This guy here. This guy here. Little blue guy. Yeah, he looks very amphibious. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get me back on the old screen. I need to take out my view counter because I'm not live. Oh, oh. Bow. There we go. Let's hit play. And we're seeing quite a lot of different types of fish, but they're, they're definitely Tetra Neons from real world. Yeah, so I don't know whether they've borrowed some assets that they're going to be replacing out at some stage with procedural assets, but they were freaking Tetra Neons. Yeah, I get one. Anyway, let's uh, head on out here. I used to keep fish. Oh. And this is where we kind of get the reveal of the world. I'm liking the water shaders. However, when we looked at all the old No Man's Sky demo trailers, they had the same reflections on their water, which was stripped out when the game came into real world. Okay, there's little creatures running around in the foliage down here. Little, little fauna. We've got a giant dragon flying over loft, which is pretty lovely. We've got another dragon over here. And you can see here, this dragon's got all these spines going down his back. This one has none of those. So there's a lot of variation in the dragons. We're going to see more dragons later on as well. We've got all these little birds over here, but there's big enough birds to actually ride on as mounts in a bit. I'm loving all this contrasting in grass. It's like the yellow against the blue. Real contrasting colours 
colours, but when they're put together like this in a palette, it just drives the eyes crazy. It's a real feast for the eye peepers. Oh, and something else. Look, there's now changed from being underwater with a fish type logo to having a leaf. So yeah, maybe that's a biome denotation there. Like little, little critter jumping around in the, in the woodlands there. There he goes. Looks like something else happening. Oh, 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 we get a couple of flashes here, people. So if I just knock that back just a tad. We've got this floating cube in the air and it does seem to have these sort of like little holes in it with some sort of smoky sort of residue coming out of it. But that looks almost technological, doesn't it? So a big takeaway inside of this image is there's no flora anywhere or fauna. We've got this flagpole here, and there's another one down there, just to give you the size of indication. So I don't know how big this is, or how far away it is from the character, or how large it is in comparison to the character when you compare that pole to that pole down there. This thing isn't cast in a sh shadow in near proximity, or is that it there? If it is, I think it's bloody huge. It's hard to tell, though. Anyways, this guy has got some sort of magical wand or staff within his hands, which could say that there's magic. He's also wearing a freaking wizard hat. Yes, we're going to be playing as wizards. Or are we? You know, because they have introduced staffs into No Man's Sky and they just act like multi-tools. Who's to say this isn't just a lovely sort of torch that you don't have to keep reigniting with any sort of fuel? It might just give you ambient light for cave dwelling. I hope it's more than that, I hope it is magic, but in this trailer we don't see anybody wield magic other than to perhaps imbue weapons with enchantments. So that's another question I have, to what depth is magic in this game? Anyway, let's hit play. Sweet! So we've got a various ways of means of travel inside of this game, people. So let's just hit that up again and pause. One of them being using gliders. This is very reminiscent of Biomutant. Or it is to me, anyway. It looks very Biomutant-esque. In fact, some of the creatures in this look very Biomutant-esque that you can play as. But this one looks very human. Very human-like hands. They don't look like claws or paws. And I'm not too sure about that one. I can't really tell on that one. But we are seeing a little bit of variance to the backpacks and to the actual clothing. And it looks like we can see the tip of a blue blade there. So again, perhaps this one is a sword wielder or dagger wielder or something. I want to know how many different classes there are in this game and whether you can do mixed classes. And I would love to know a little bit more about combat. So although we've seen this trailer is perfect for means of transport. I think that's the only thing that we've really got down and boiled down to a fine art in this one is the means of transport. We've seen gliders, we've seen mounts, we've seen all sorts. But we haven't seen is whether there's fast travel, which let's face it, we could do with that in a, a freaking earth-sized like environment. Anyway, and we've got these guys, giant pigeons. Yeah, a lot of people are saying they're crows. I refer to most birds as pigeons, avian varieties, I guess. And again, this guy's got very human looking hands, not paws or claws. I'd imagine it's human with the, um, the shape of the whip with the hips and then how it sucks in. Almost looks like a female character. And we've got ourselves a bunny there climbing aboard a, 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 a pigeon. I'm liking the rain in effects. We have had those added into No Man's Sky and it makes all your armor go shiny. It looks like they've got this same tech in here. And the shadows almost look like they're actually being cast correctly as well. It looks like it's got dynamic lighting. I really like that shot. It's a shame we didn't see a little bit more of that. And again, it's another biome. It looks freaking lovely. Okay, back into this biome then, where we actually cut from. And what's quite cool about this is you can see some little huts over here and buildings, but we, we pan round to those in a moment, so I'll just let it carry on playing. And it looks like some of the weapons that they're carrying on their backs here, I mean, that's got a bow, but this one looks like it might be a staff. It's got the same sort of loop bit at the end there, but it, you don't really... Oh, look, it's got an axe this end, though. So it's an axe there, turn. So maybe you just change the ends out. Who freaking knows? This guy's swinging his axe at that tree to fell it. This guy's carrying a log. So resource gathering, I don't know whether it goes into your backpack or just lays on the floor like this, and then you have to pick it up and carry it to where it needs to go. And this guy could be going out to get that log. Who freaking knows? And what's that? Okay, so just here, we've got some sort of bowl or dish with blue light coming out of the top of it. And we've got this little home sign. I'm wondering whether you can fast travel to your bases. And if you've got a few bases, maybe you can fast travel between them using some sort of magical portaling technique. 
don't know. Maybe that's how you can home into other people's bases. If you've got them on your friends list, you can see their homestead and you can teleport straight to it. It looks like there's some sort of anvil that's auto-powering itself here. There's all sparks flying off of it anyway. Is that a crafting bench or is this the crafting bench? That to me looks more like a crafting bench. Look at these stones on top of here. It's almost like Stonehenge going on up there. It could just be procedural rock placement, but even still, it draws the eye. I'd be like, I'm going to go and explore that. Heck yes, there might be some resources over there. The way this wall goes up right here almost looks like it's some kind of magic casting into that. You can see here different build techniques. So you've got all this wood stuff. That one's clearly all out of wood with some sort of moss or thatched roof. This one is clearly stone. So we're going to get a few different building sort of modules. I'd imagine anyway. It looks that way to me, people. Okay, well that's all going up quite nicely. And we can see another type of mount here. It looks like a kingfisher. Yeah, there he goes. Taken to the skies. And away it goes. Yeah, lovely little bird, that one. Don't know what I'm going to be. Am I going to be a dragon rider? Or am I going to go for one of these birdie man bird birds? Okay, there's a big plump dragon. Oh, 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 jeez. Okay, let's, uh, let's skim that back as Chad. And let's hit play on that. Because we get to see a badger guy here. Look, I thought it was a headless person, first of all. But he's looking down at something. But yeah, pretty darn freaking epic. A little badger man. I think I'm going to play as a rabbit man, but a badger is a close second. And again, this one's got a lovely ponytail over here as well. Pretty darn cool. This looks like some sort of Viking long ship. It hasn't got the dragon heads on the end of the actual boat, but it does have that long boat sort of style to it. And look at the tail end of this dragon. That's freaking cool. I love the tail on that dragon. And look at the reflections in the water. But then, if you look at the original trailers to No Man's Sky, it had the same water reflections. Sadly, those water reflections have been lost in recent editions, or any edition of No Man's Sky. So part of me wonders whether this is being shown on a high-end PC, and although it might look close to this when it comes to console, we might not get to see this graphical fidelity. You know, I'm just putting it out there, because we don't have these water shaders, despite them being in the trailers, in early No Man's Sky trailers. Anyway, let's hit play. Okay, so here we have what looked like some hunting going on. Let's just hit this for a second. Quite quick. So it looks like these players are running these sort of um, boars into like a kill zone, which is pretty darn cool. I quite like that, working together to hunt down your prey. And Or are these boars then going to become mounts? Do you have to injure a creature before you can actually tame it and mount it? Or would you feed it? I don't know. Oh, they could be killing it for survival reasons. Yet I don't really see gauges to show level of hunger or anything like that inside this game. There's not a sort of hunger bar that I can see in any of the HUDs. So why kill the creatures? Is it to actually make new sort of weapons? Is it to make new armour? Again, these bows look pretty much identical, but they look slightly different from the bows that we saw at the start. But these guys are definitely in the same sort of yellow coat, cl cloaks as prior. So maybe they are early game. I'm not too sure. It'll be interesting to find out. This almost looks like a river that's going down this way. So hopefully we're going to get flowing rivers. They did mention rivers, in fact. But anyway, let's hit play. Some of these flowers look like they're straight out of No Man's Sky. Oh, I'm going to go back a tad more there. Let's hit play again. Aha! So this is an interesting scene where you can see this sword that's got a flame effect coming off of it, which is pretty darn snazzy. And I think he's just hit this little crab down here. And you see their pincers on their hands. They've got this sort of like reddish glow to them. It looks like one of them has been severed down here. So it looks like perhaps it's actually fallen off the crab and perhaps it's even lost a leg. It looks like we can actually do some proper damage to these little scuttle, scuttled crabbies. And this is a giant freaking crab creature over here. Almost a boss-like. Pretty darn pretty gore. So yeah, this looks like it's a fire-imbued weapon. But again... <sighs> It's hard to say exactly to what degree. Let's just hit play again on that. Just let that play through. Bang! Yeah, okay. It's just a single swipe. It'd be nice to see some combos. I want to see some actual combat. Now, if I was Hello Games, I would label this trailer as mounts inside and travel inside of, um, you know, Light No Fire. But I would love to see a combat trailer. I'd love to see a multiplayer trailer that shows all the lobbies. And I'd like to see a little bit more of the lore and the story and what the actual end end game is. 
I'll get to that in a bit, in a bit more detail. But here we're looking at different mounts. We can see there's a bird, we can see that there's a giant plump dragon over here, and we can see this Falcor looking get bag right here. I really like the Falcor one, I like his eye rings. Anyway, look at all the plants and the foliage and the diversity in just the flowers. But some of these, like I say, look like they were lifted and shifted from No Man's Sky. So play. Freaking nice. Now, as this dragon takes off, this big one, you can kind of see a, like a, low, a makeshift tent. Look, there it is. There's the top of it down there. If I can pause it just at the right time. As they take off, boom. There it is. There, look. There's like this little makeshift tent. I'm wondering before you get to the point of um, building your own sort of base, whether you've got that just as like a semi-permanent structure that you put down. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering, I guess. I was watching uh, Ghostlight. Ghostlight is a new content creator to No Man's Sky, and he spotted this. So yeah, I've been watching nothing but people's breakdown trailers, so a lot of this stuff that I'm spotting now, I've spotted thanks to them, so I might as well give credit where credit's due. A pretty darn freaking epic breakdown. I put Ghostlight's video just up there. Go hit it up because, yeah, he's awesome. He's just hit a thousand subscribers and it's well deserved. Anyway, hit play. And then we've got this purple dragon here that's got that lovely tail. It does clip into the ground there, though. And there was a bit of clipping, you know. And that chunky dragon over there, he's a chunky boy, is nice. Look, look at the size of him. Look, it's like a flying tank. Freaking nice. Again, he's got an awesome tail. There's some smaller birds or avians over there. And down in the water, are what look like beginner sort of rafts. Look, there's one just there. There's one there. There's a couple. There's another one over there. And there's another little hut over here with a little raft by it. Now, we've seen we've seen the long ships as well. So the long ships are probably what we've progressed to. But a bit like those wigwams or teepees or whatever, perhaps you start out with one of these rafts to start off with, a little easy to craft one, and you work your way up to those Viking long ships. Not sure, but I think that's a safe bet. Okay, well, let's hit play. Love in the water. I like the fact that you can see all these corals in the coast and stuff like that. It looks freaking lush. And this is proper foresty. You know, we were told that we get forest biomes in No Man's Sky, but it's more like woodland. Here it goes from woodland to forest, and it transitions quite well. Oh, look, look at that. Okay, let's go back just a tad. Look at this. I'm loving this. You're flying through storm clouds here. You know, yeah. Awesome, and look at this dragon with the giant horns. It looks like Diabolos from freaking um, Monster Hunter, doesn't it? Can't see any front arms on this guy. He's freaking a beast, isn't he? And is this a different type of character? It almost looks like it's got like foxy ears. Foxy, foxy, I guess. So we've seen quite a lot of races. Again, he's got he's got horns on this one. Oh no, oh no, I've lost my place. Let's get all the way back to where I was. Okay, yeah, right, well, I'm back. Anyways, this little guy looks like he might have a magical wand in his hand or something. Um, but there's no HUD meter to show what weapon this actually is. But yeah, pretty cool. And his little backpack's red, so I don't know how much customization we're going to have. Or whether there's customization after the fact of character creation. Or what the character creator even looks like. Okay, let's hit play. But again, lovely mount. Ah, this, this is quite a concerning shot. Just uh, skip that back just a tad. Just hit play. Okay, so this shot here, there is no trees, there's no bushes, there's no real grass. It looks pretty much barren, doesn't it? So perhaps we are going to come across barren, barrenness areas. I mean, there's a flag or something going on over here, and some sort of post or foliage there. This mountain at the top here almost looks transparent. I don't know whether that's clipping or whether it hasn't rendered in properly. But this looks like an earlier shot. That kind of troubles me a little, that bit. Because if you come across like a mile or two of this, and you're not on a dragon, you're just walking on foot, you're gonna get bored pretty damn freaking quick. Anyway, let's just play. Cool, yo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're back to this again as we go over the actual mountain. I love all the clouds. The clouds look freaking awesome. And then there's some kind of little mini outpost up here. Is it some kind of checkpoint or something? The way it's perched on top of this mountain, though, is rather janky. It doesn't look in, it doesn't look in keeping, really. It looks like it's floating a bit. There's no real support. It doesn't look very believable, that. But that's just me being super picky. Now, this base over here is kind of intriguing. Is that placed into the actual game by the game? Or is it something a player has actually built? 
And how the fudge do you start building that high up in the freaking first place, if that is player built? I mean, look at it. It's freaking awesome. Seems to be defying gravity. There seems to be another dragon flying into it there as well. Okay, there's a little guy over here warming his hands. And again, he looks very wolf-like. And is this just a makeshift base? I know I said about the teepee or wigwam earlier, but could this be a little resting place? Is that a good way to get your energy back? Do you cook on this? Do you have to actually eat? Down here, you can see here, we've got a different biome now. It's like bulrushes. This is kind of like a swampy area, I'd imagine. And you can see it's nighttime, but it's still relatively warm. But he is carrying a freaking torch above his head. And as you can see here, this is a torch where this is clearly a wand. I mean, it's not in use right now, and it's not sort of putting out any perpetual light or anything like that. So I don't think it is a torch, as I was saying earlier. I think it is a wand, but to what degree, I don't know. Okay, And this guy clearly is some sort of fox or wolf. He's even got the bushy tail and he's got claw-type hands. So we've seen quite a different... We've seen quite a variance in races so far. It's like Sylvanian families on steroids. Anyway, let's hit play. Okay, now as this pans around, we've got a lot of birds flying about over here, which is pretty darn cool, pretty epic. We've got another little chap over here. He seems to be quite hunched over. I can't tell what race he is, but he's clearly a fox. And he's got a totally different bow than the last lot, so that's pretty darn epic. Now you've got this big guy over here, who looks like he's got a knowledge stone for a head. So it's a little bit of a nod towards No Man's Sky, and I think that's purposely done. But I love all the water effects on him. And as he rises his head, you see all the water just running off his face. Just to show how epically big he is. It almost looks like there might be some sort of door or something going on in his chest cavity here. I quite like the fire effects on the torch. But look at these little guys over here. This was pointed out in my comments. People in my comments said, Captain Steve, did you notice there's some weird little spectral type guys over to the left of the big sort of... Yeah... And yeah, they are. Look, they've got the bright eyes, almost like Jawas, but they seem to be like mist monsters. Now, inside of Bolam's artwork, funny enough, they're actually depicted little creatures like that, that have the glowing eyes and are quite black and wispy. If I can find the actual image, I'll put it on the screen here so you can actually do a comparison. Because I honestly think that the Bolam's artwork that we can see on his actual art station has been used as inspiration for some of this and it could be concept art of concept places that we might see in future trailers perhaps people so if you want a snippet of that head on over to Bo Lam's art studio and take a quick look over there art station I should say anyway hit and play. pretty darn freaking epic I mean look at the size of this guy imagine if he stood up you know that, that's freaking crazy big anyways we're over here and we've got another biome now this almost looks like some sort of desert flower. I mean, we're in a desert. Who would have freaking out and maneuvered it? The temperature's a lot higher. It's daytime. Lovely jubbly. And this bar around here, I think, denotes what time of day it is, I guess. But you can see here, this is now looks like some sort of... I don't think that's a torch. It might be a torch, but I'm fairly sure it was a different icon earlier for the torch. So if that is that some kind of spell weapon, and how do you know how much mana you have or power? It's not really overly clear. I really like the foliage on here. I didn't didn't notice too much here. Apart from as you're running, it kicks up dust. It doesn't leave hoof, hoof prints, but it does throw up dust and pebbles as they run, which is kind of a nice touch, really. You've got all these guys all travelling together, so it makes you wonder how big are parties in this. Oh, 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 oh! This guy here looks like he's got a pig's head. He looks like he's got a pig's head. So I think that's a hog type character there, people. Pretty darn cool. So yeah, again, another race added into the mix. And we've got a guy on a dragon over here. So we've got like one, two, three, four, five, six players all running together there. A lot of the time you see four players together, but there's clearly more than four here. Very cool, very cool indeed. I love the fact that the dragon is just slightly faster than these. So yeah, choosing your mount and how you want to traverse is pretty much key to this. That's definitely a pig type looking guy there. Okay, now entering it into here, you can see all these leaves falling off the trees, which made me think, is there going to be some kind of, you know, seasonal aspect to this? There's a host of swords and an axe there. 
and there's a quite a bevy of weapons on display here that may, may look like their later game. It's like this sword on this rabbit's back. Looks like it's far more evolved than some of the swords we've seen before, like this like scimitar on this mole man. He looks like a mole man. He's got far bigger hands than any of the other creatures we've seen so far. So mole guy as well. Pretty nice. This guy you can see has actually got a different skin color. He's a lot darker. So, yes, you can change skin colours in your character creator as well. Pretty darn awesome. This guy's got big hands. He almost looks like the badger person from the back. We've got the rabbit guy here. This shield is clearly up on the wall over here. So maybe if you complete missions for the, the guy in here or somebody in here, maybe you might get gifted one of these shields. Maybe that's how they got the better sword. I really don't know. But some of these weapons look far more advanced than some of the weapons we've seen up to now. So I think it's a good assumption. You can also see that it's now got a sword icon down here as well. I don't know which character we were looking at right now. Anyway, let's hit play. But I do love all the leaves falling. I do like the animations on all these guys. They're very nicely animated. Very cutesy, aren't they? They really are. And as it pans around, there's a guy sitting here on the throne. He looks a little bit, you know, nonplussed. He moves his hand down in a moment to take stock of what's going on in front of him. But is he a mission giver? I don't know, but he often, he, he looks, he stands out as being a mission giver. This dragon's really nice, it's got lots of yellow banding on it, clearly different from any of the dragons we've seen so far. Again, we've got a sword down in the bottom corner here, the health bar has gone up to max. But anyway, let's hit play. Pretty darn freaking cool. I've noticed you don't get any of the weather effects when you're flying on your dragons, so maybe you negate any sort of weather effects when they're flying, who freaking knows. Again, we've got a luscious landscape here, and we've got one of these round balls again. And we can clearly see here that it's actually perched on a plinth. And again, it's got all this sort of weird marbling that looks like labyrinth sort of stuff going on. I am wondering whether these are player-driven hubs, and these are sort of markers that you need to sort of set your way to, because we've seen quite a few of these in the different biomes. So yeah, I think these are going to be points of interest. I think they're going to play a massive part in the actual story and into the lore. And what the story and lore is, is anyone's guess right now, people. Pretty darn freaking epic. Um, I'm loving everything that I'm seeing so far. I've just got so many questions around everything that I'm seeing so far, though, people. And this end part is the part that's keeping me up at night right now, trying to work out what the fudge is going on. Is the world encapsulated in this giant red orb that we're seeing at the end? Or is this a marker that we're going to get to and there's something happening inside of this thing that we need to stop from happening? Is there a giant apocalypse facing this world and that's what we're seeing being happening right there, everything being torn asunder? And is our goal to stop this from happening? Or is it just everything is happening inside of this orb and we're trying to find the answer to it all? I think everything's happening inside of it and there's going to be a cataclysm, mainly because at the end here, well, if you pause it when it comes out, there's actually a player standing on a finger that's outreached towards this thing. There's a player right there. And I'm not sure, but I think there might be another one down at the bottom of the screen, or was I imagining something? It might have been a smudge on my phone screen. Yeah, I think it was a smudge. Anyway, so this hand reaching up, I'm wondering whether it might be alluding to the Atlas holding up the world or something, you know? Anyway, let's hit play. I mean, all these rocks seem to be floating under their own duress. There seems to be some sort of magic or wizardry going on there. Again, got more questions than answers. Looks like there's a load of birds flying about over here. We've got this lovely mountain range. I, know, I can only imagine this is somewhere in the game universe and somehow, we're going to come across this thing that might give us answers to why we're actually in this universe in the first place. Oh look, there's a, uh, there is a little black structure down here, but it's not a person, it's actually a rock. I can see that better now. I've been watching this on my phone, I'm actually watching this on my laptop at the moment. I thought that might have been a person in a, in a witch, like a, an Obi-Wan type character in a hood, but it's not. It's just a freaking rock. Anyway people, that's my deep dive for reels this time peeps, because before like I say, I was a little bit excited, and uh, when I'm excited, I just go off on one. I go freaking nuts. But anyway, I think I've got more questions than I have answers. Obviously, we've got answers to what Hello Games has been working on for the last five years, which is freaking lovely. But at the same time, I, I would love to see what the combat is. I'd like to know all the different races that you can choose from. 
how detailed the custo customization is for the characters, how many different types of weapon types are there, class types, all that sort of shenanigans, and what the backstory is and what the end goal is. Is there an end goal? Is this just open sandbox? Is it a case of just exploring for exploring's sake? You know, is it just to show off what dragon you've got to your mate and your base and stuff like that? A little bit like No Man's Sky. Or is there going to be deep lore narrative? They've already said that there is rich lore inside of this, but what lore? You know, I mean, before when I picked up No Man's Sky, it was like there is a secret at the centre of the universe. You get to the centre of the universe and all that happens is you get sucked back and put at the start again to explore the next universe, which is almost identical to the one you were just in. I'm hoping this has a better end game loop because I think where No Man's Sky has fall, fallen down and fallen down fairly heavily is on the end game loop. You've got that story, you've got the lore, you've got the drive to get to the centre, but then what after that? And you get yourself OP, you get all this lovely stuff, you start showing it off to your mates, and then it falls down as to what you do with all of that. You know, other games that have sort of brought that forwards is something like World of Warcraft, where the game evolves for those players that invested the time. You hit level 14, it's almost like another game. That sort of thing has sorely been missed, I think, inside of No Man's Sky. You get so far, you hit it so far in No Man's Sky, and then boom. Oh, I've just noticed something. Let me just uh, jump back over here. So if I go back just a tad, when they're swimming underwater, okay, the actual... The actual icon in the lower corner down here in the right hand side, you can see it looks more like that wizard staffy type thing. I think that just means you've got a torch, but it's not actually lit at that point in time because you're swimming underwater. As soon as they come out of the water, that changes almost immediately to upright like you can light it. There we go. So I don't think that person on horseback earlier actually had a staff icon in the bottom corner. It was an unlit torch. Okay, Corleo, not a problem. Anyway, I'll leave that running in the background while I'm just jibber-jabbering on. So yeah, other questions I've got are around magic use. What, to what extent is magic inside of this game? Are we going to be using it to fell enemies? I would love to see a combat trailer. I would like to see a, a trailer around the multiplayer and the hub aspect and the social aspect. And I'd like to see one on the lore and what the lore is like. I'd also like to see what to what extent you're going to be interacting with trade. You know, are you going to have to go to shops or is this all about crafting your own stuff? Oh, I just spotted something else, people. Let me just skip that back a bit because that's pretty darn cool. Okay, so I was talking about um, hog people inside of this, yeah? Let me just jump back over here and hit play. I'm spotting something every time I watch this freaking video. This little guy up here, look, he's definitely a pig man. He's definitely got a pig head. He is definitely a piggy, 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 piggy. I guess he is. Anyway, I'll jump back over again. I get excited over the most simplest of things, people. I really do. But yeah, how many different types of races are there? And does having a pig person serve you over the point of having a, an amphibious guy? Do amphibious guys swim longer? Can they hold their breath longer? Do they suffer more if you fly over a certain height? All this sort of stuff. Is there any class perks to choosing a different race over another one? And what's the starting point? Where do you start in this game and what do you start with? What's the tutorial like? I've got so many freaking questions, people. Burning questions that I'd love to see answered within like the next year or so. I'm hoping Hello Games do some sit-down interviews with the likes of the likes of anybody, really. It'd be nice if they sat down with members of community or even had open play tests for beta and stress testing and server testing. I'm up for that. If you want to hit me up, Hello Games, heck yes, I'll sign an NDA. I come aboard and help you with this one. Heck yes, this looks freaking phenomenal, and um, I I know that I'm going to be along for the long haul on this journey. Oh, right now, why is actually on Dragonback? Another thing to note is you can actually see the bow icon in the bottom right hand corner. So I don't know whether you can fire off a few arrows while you're on Dragonback. That'd be quite cool if you can. But then I haven't seen much in this verse. I mean, right now, can you see any enemies? Can you see any big freaking fauna wandering about? No. Which, again, is a little bit odd. Uh, but we'll see what the game brings, people. I'm hoping it's going to bring a constant challenge. It does say that it's constant survival. So we'll have to see to what sort of extent. Also, will there be game modes? Inside of No Man's Sky, you've got permadeath, you've got normal, you've got creative, and you've got relaxed mode. You've got four different modes. And then we've also got expeditions. Is there going to be that sort of stuff in here? Can you just hit up a creative save? Be in a sandbox world? 
Maybe you can, maybe you can't. These are all sort of questions I have right now, people. What are your biggest questions for this game? Sound up in the comments. Let us know below what your biggest comments are. I might do another video on this. In fact, you know, all we've got right now is this sort of trailer to go on. But every time I watch it, I see something new. So I'm probably going to do another one of these at some point. So yeah, hit us up. Let us know your own questions and I might feature them. Till next time, people. Salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.